cooking steak perfectly can seem overwhelming and there are a few areas where it can go wrong but if you follow these key steps that I'm going to show you you'll be cooking steak like a pro Woo! Hi, I'm Nikki. Welcome back to our kitchen where we show you how to make delicious, family-friendly recipes. Cooking steak is a bit of an occasion for Chris and I and we really love it as a special meal, so it's got to be perfect. So let's start by talking about the cut of steak. Now when I'm cooking steak at home, I really like to use ribeye or sirloin steak. And you'll find that on ribeye steak you normally have quite a big chunk of fat in the middle and some veins of fat running throughout and they'll render down during cooking to ensure that your steak is lovely and juicy. A sirloin is also a really good cut of steak as well. Just make sure that you've got some of those veins of fat and look out for gristle. You really don't want too much gristle in there. Now I tend to go for steaks that are about two and a half centimetres thick and about eight to 10 ounces in weight. And normally I would go to the butcher to ask for these to be sliced specially for me because when you go to the supermarket and you get the ready pack steak, well, they tend to be a little bit on the stingy side. The first crucial, and I really mean crucial, do not pass go, do not collect 200 pounds, this is a really important step, is taking your steaks out of the fridge before cooking and allowing them to come up to room temperature. Cooking steaks straight from the fridge is a big no-no and it'll result in steaks that are tough and cold in the middle. So you really wanna take those steaks out of the fridge about an hour or two before cooking so they can come up to room temperature. So now we've got the steaks up to room temperature, we need something to cook them in. We need to use a heavy based pan or griddle. I love to use my cast iron skillet. A well seasoned cast iron pan is gonna heat up evenly and it's gonna really retain that heat, which will give the steak the opportunity to get a really lovely crust on it. Now we wanna heat the pan over a high heat. We want that pan to be lovely and hot before the steak touches it. And now we want to start on the next step, which is seasoning the steak. And we're gonna start off by coating the steak in oil. We want to coat the steak and not the pan, and that ensures the steak has got a lovely even coating. We want to use a flavourless oil with a high smoke point, such as sunflower oil. As well as the oil, we want to season the steak generously with salt and freshly ground pepper. Massage the oil, salt and pepper into both sides of the steaks. Some people say that seasoning your steak with pepper before cooking can cause the pepper to become bitter, but I've never found that to be the case. The key is to use freshly ground pepper that's just a little bit coarse. You don't want to use powdered pepper because that will burn. And don't worry about using plenty of pepper because the taste of the pepper does mellow as the steak's cooking and it really complements the steak well. We want to ensure the steaks are cooked nice and evenly, so we're going to turn the steaks every minute and this will ensure nice even cooking and a good crust on both sides. I know that some people say that you should put the steak in the pan and leave it to cook and then just turn it once, but trust me, this is the best way for the most even cooking. For a steak this size, we're talking about four minutes of cooking altogether for a steak that's medium to medium rare. So let's get cooking. It's gonna be sizzly and rather smoky, so I'm gonna have my extractor going and the window open time for some ASMR steak cooking.
For the last minute of cooking, we're going to add a large knob of butter, a few lightly squashed cloves of garlic and a few sprigs of thyme. We want to turn the heat off and then baste the steaks with the butter and the juices in the pan. This bit's optional, but I like the slight hint of thyme and garlic that it adds to the steak. Once done, remove from the pan and place on a warm plate or a board to rest. The level of doneness is complete personal preference and there's a little trick you can do with your hand to check for the level of doneness. This is rare, medium rare, medium, medium well and well. So I'd say that is about medium. I'll leave some example cooking times in the description below for a two and a half centimetre ribeye or sirloin. You want to rest the steak for the same amount of time that you cooked it. The steak will continue to cook a little bit further whilst it's on the board, but it'll also relax and become unbelievably juicy and tender. This step is just as crucial as bringing your steak up to room temperature like we did at the start. You really have to rest your steak. Once it's rested, it's ready to serve. Let's take a look. Look at that, that looks amazing. Mm. So tender and juicy, perfectly cooked, perfectly seasoned, mm. so good. And those juices that are left on your board, why not add them to your sauce if you're making one? Mm. I'm gonna have some more. <laughs> this served with peppercorn sauce and crispy saute potatoes oh my gosh it's one of my favorite posh treat meals of all time next week i'm going to share a roundup of all of my favorite sauces to serve with steak and most of them can be whipped up whilst your steak's resting so make sure you're subscribed and let me know in the comments below what's your favorite posh meal see you next time